Can you beat Castle Crashes without leveling up? Is it possible to go through the entire game without spending a single skill point? Let's find out. The run starts with us celebrating in the king's castle until a mysterious sorcerer comes and steals the king's crystal. The king however needs his bath salts so he gets sent out to retrieve the crystal. Now the king's castle is under siege by barbarians but luckily we have a wooden spoon. Now for this run the beginning of the game was a breeze since it's intended to be done at level 1 so we flew through each stage and bought some healing potions at our first shot. Immediately after clearing the first area I went and picked up Snooty who will give us a plus 4 to our strength stat as well as went and grabbed a weapon which gives a plus 2 to strength. Now is the perfect time to explain the rules of the run. The first rule is the run can only be completed without leveling up a single stat and the second rule is we can only use weapons that are level 1. And finally, pets are allowed. With the Snooty and our new weapon, we went to go continue the siege in the castle. It wasn't long until we came across our first boss, the enemy battling ram. Since it was the first boss of the game, it wasn't really a challenge, so after a lot of spamming attacks in the air, the battling ram eventually fell. And soon after we go against our second boss, the barbarian boss. Once again, with it being an early game boss, it wasn't too difficult, and with a lot of jump spamming, the boss eventually died. Now would be a good time to mention, you may notice that we are not the number level one, this is because we cannot stop ourselves from leveling up, however since we are not spending any skill points in the skill tree, we still remain the stats of a level 1. Moving on, we eventually make our way into the forest, but once again it's still very early game so when we came to our third boss it wasn't too difficult to take down as well. And one quick chase scene later, and we eventually moved on to the catfish fight. Now at this point it was beginning to become noticeable the lack of damage we were doing. So the catfish fight took a lot longer than usual, however the fight itself is not too difficult as long as you are good at dodging and playing it safe. For the fourth boss fight it was not too difficult as we are able to juggle this fight. Juggling is a very important mechanic in castle crashes as it allows you to dish out a lot of damage whilst taking very little to no damage yourself. It's something that I'm going to rely upon a lot during this run, however some enemies and a lot of bosses cannot be juggled and that is where it gets very difficult in this run. Moving on to the bat boss fight, this again wasn't too difficult as it was just a simple rinse and repeat of getting your damage in whilst avoiding the attacks. We then went and harvested some honey humanely from some bees and then immediately went and crashed a wedding. God, commentating over this game is strange. Now the groom boss fight is where the game really ramps up in difficulty. The groom can dish out a lot of damage very fast and if you are not careful can get instantly killed. However, you can also stun lock the groom. So using a lot of careful timing and patience, I was able to whittle the health down of the groom. However, I just managed to defeat the groom after almost dying near the end. Moving on to the carriage section of the game anyone who jumped on top of the carriage was getting thrown off so that wasn't very difficult and for the troll boss fight we managed to actually one phase him which was very surprising but at the same time he is one big meter hitbox so moving into the cyclops castle area this is where we can see some enemies that cannot be juggled so the difficulty of these fights have gone up dramatically which also meant clearing each stage was taking a much longer time and on top of that these enemies had a tendency of staying behind and throwing bombs which would constantly knock me down and ruin any rhythm and by the time i got to the cyclops boss fight i had no healing potions as well as having very little health but luckily for this fight it is not too difficult to dodge attacks as well as getting some good damage so it took a while but i was able to eventually get the boss into his enraged mode which increases how often he attacks so once again with even more patience we eventually able to get the boss to die moving on to volcano world it's a bit of an interesting area because the enemies can be juggled but at the same time they do a lot of damage. But I was able to push through to the volcano boss fight which wasn't too difficult as he's more of a gimmick boss fight to introduce the sandwich mechanic so all I had to do was really dodge his fireball attacks and the boss finally died. For the dragon boss fight this was a lot closer than I would have liked it to be. I originally started off with the sandwich strat of getting a lot of hits in very fast by using the sandwich mode however the trade off for doing this amount of damage was constantly getting attacked by his fire breath so after running out of healing potions and almost dying I I played a lot more carefully only getting in my damage when I could and backing off before the fire breath attack but I actually got a very clutch level up which increases your health to full again so with a full health bar I was able to finish off the dragon boss fight. Next was the industrial castle which is notorious for being a run killer. The enemies here dish out a lot of damage as well as having some of the best magic in the game but after playing very carefully and defeating the very difficult enemies I was able to move on to the 
these traps which are very easy and everyone should be able to get past first try. So after clearing the traps first try I moved on to the elevator part of this run which when I did my bow orny challenge was very difficult as there's a lot of enemies in a very condensed area but since I was no longer confined to a bow I was able to introduce all of these enemies to the juggle corner and soon after the elevator we came across the first proper roadblock of the run. So there are these giant enemies that spawn from time to time and this specific one has armor so he is very tanky. Giants have the ability to pick you up and throw you which do a lot of damage as well as stunning you. And on top of that this giant specifically is very aggressive, he likes to always be in your face. This meant that fighting him in hand to hand combat wasn't really going to be effective. So I tried using my bow and arrow for a bit of range but yeah one damage is not gonna cut it and I unfortunately died. I decided I decided to try the boomerang on the giant so I went on a different character to go grab it really quickly and then ran through the industrial castle again. And for a little bit the boomerang seemed to work however the timing had to be close to perfect as if you messed up with your timing you could take damage and die. And that is exactly what happened. So I went to go restock on my healing potions and run through the industrial castle again. But whilst on the elevator I was struggling to get the juggle corner going as convincing the enemies to join in wasn't going to work and I very quickly got attacked by multiple enemies at once and died. This really shows how easy it is to die in this level 1 run as if you get stun maps by a single enemy you can just die straight away. I eventually decided to change to snail burr as it will give us a massive increase to our defense. This meant I had more room for error as I could take more hits however I was doing a lot less damage now without snooty so this meant that each area was going to take a little longer. And for the boss fight of this run I ran out of healing potions so I didn't really have any room for error however this boss fight is very annoying as it kind of relies on range as you cannot step on the red grates. So since I did very little damage it took a long time to defeat each section of this boss. However another clutch level up came in so I managed to get all of my health back and after a lot of patience I was able to finally defeat the industrial castle. I let my chat decide what they wanted to do with the industrial castle's prince and every single one of them voted him to die. So after a 360 no scope I got the golden telescope and was able to progress to the next area of the game and after one very fast boat trip across the ocean we landed in the desert area. Now this area of the game really slowed down the pace of things even more as there's a nice mix of enemies here who can't be staggered and will also grab you. Enemies that will go underground and become invulnerable for a certain amount of time as well as the regular enemies not being able to be juggled. It took a while but eventually we made it to the aliens. Now the aliens I thought was going to be the make or break of this run as there are a lot of them that do quite a bit of damage but they also have no health thing could be defeated in one shot. So this meant it was going to be a 50-50 of this part of the game being very difficult or very easy. But since the aliens could be juggled it ended up being very easy so luckily the alien section was not too bad. And it was at this point during the streaming of this run that my channel hit 1000 subscribers. And I would just like to take a minute to thank every single one of you for subscribing to my channel and supporting a small creator like me. It really means a lot to me that people are coming to my videos, watching them, giving me feedback and just generally being very positive about everything. So thank you to every single one of you for the support and I promise I will keep striving to make better and more quality content. Back to the run, I ended up crashing the alien ship and stealing some guy's camel and after riding on my way to the sandcastle I reached the second big roadblock of the run. Not surprisingly the second roadblock was another giant enemy so after dying to this part of the game I went and restocked my healing potions and tried again. To try and take down this giant I decided to use the boomerang strat which is very effective against giants however it kind of needs to be done in a 1v1 situation. When there are other enemies there it makes it a lot harder to get the timing correct between the boomerang and attacks which just leaves more room for error. But right after struggling to defeat this giant we get bombarded with two more giants plus three smaller enemies. This was going to test my patience. Luckily however these two giants were very slow compared to the rest of the enemies so I was able to train them around to make some separation and focus on defeating the smaller guys first. And after dwindling down the numbers a bit, I focused on doing some damage 
to these giants. I figured out that hitting a giant four times whilst in the air will cause them to fall over, as well as just hitting them whilst in the air will cause them to stagger on the spot. So this gave me a method to safely attack the giants without risking taking damage from them, as well as still keep moving from the other enemies that are around the giants. So by using this strat, I was able to eventually dwindle down all the enemies and defeat this area. And for the next area, I had no healing potions, so I had to play very carefully. But these enemies decided they wanted to do this tornado attack, which was very hard to avoid. But I just barely managed to scrape past and get to the end volleyball section with a sliver of health left. And for the volleyball section, you can't take damage, so as long as you... What was that? Game, what was that? <sighs> And we're back. I decided to repay the favour to the enemies in our rematch. And after scoring 10 points of the game, I won the map. The map unlocks us the next section of the game, which is going to get a lot more difficult now. Moving into the next area, we get a great example of the difficulty increase. Luckily, however, these four giants have less health than the regular giants, but still, it's not an easy fight. Being able to juggle these enemies really was the saving grace, as it just makes a massive difference. Soon we come across the mini troll boss fight again, except this time he isn't a boss. But juggling all of his babies, it wasn't too difficult. And soon enough, we come on to the biggest troll fight of this game. For some reason, there's this corn boss fight, which just completely comes out of nowhere. And for whatever reason, the developers decided to make this corn boss fight have an insane amount of health. No, really, I believe that the corn has the most health out of any boss in the game. On top of that, he has many moves, which make it so you get knocked down and can't damage him, as well as just avoiding you a lot of the times. This results in an extremely long and boring boss fight. Mix that with a level 1 only run and you can see just where this is going. And after about 20 minutes, I unfortunately died near the end of the fight, so I had to redo it again. Uh... Moving on to the next area of the game, we come across these murloc enemies, which are kind of annoying because they have this little jump move which you can't damage them from, but they are not too difficult, so once again, it was just a patience test. And these guys have the coolest death animations, but after fighting my way through a lot of them, I eventually came across the Medusa boss fight. Now, I was originally really struggling with this boss fight because if you get too close to her, one of her snakes will bite you and it's very difficult to avoid. So I couldn't really figure out a strategy to get good damage on her. I tried shooting my arrows at her. I tried juggling her babies back at her, but nothing just seemed to work. However, I actually figured out a really cool hidden secret within Castle Crashers that I guarantee not a single player knows. The block button. That is right, in Castle Crashers you can actually stop and block damage. But with this revolutionary new find, I was able to block the damage of the snake and get very consistent damage. And it didn't take long, but the Medusa boss fight finally was defeated. But soon I came across our very first proper roadblock. And I mean, we were stuck on this part for a long time. So not surprising it, it was another giant enemy. However, this giant had a big suit of armor that made it so he took very little damage. On top of that, he hit like a tank. If you got caught by this guy, it was over. Plus he had his two minions following him, which made it very difficult to get any consistent damage. I tried using the boomerang strat, I tried using the bow and arrow strat, I tried using the throw yourself at him strat, and it all failed. So I was completely stumped. However, there is a pet that can do damage on his own. There are a few of these pets, but the one I was after is called Dragonhead. Dragonhead can be bought from the insane store, which is only unlocked once you beat the game on any character. However, there were two problems. First was Dragonhead only shot when you did damage to an enemy. The second one is the damage was awful. And I mean awful. Dragonhead, dra your, one, your one ability is to do damage. What do you mean it's a kid game? I decided to fully go into the archery build so I got Meowbert as well as the wooden spoon which gave the biggest increase to our archery skill. So this was the most damage that the bow and arrow could do and by doing this I surprisingly defeated the giant and cleared the first stage of this level. So we can finally progress to the next part of So after a while, we finally cleared all of the giants. Now, the next part of this area was kind of the opposite of the giants because the enemies were easier, but there was a lot of them. 
However, a new strat was born this day. I like to call this one the ladder strat. But essentially, if I climbed up these ladders and then climbed back down them, all of the enemies would group together, allowing me to get easy damage on all the enemies at once. This worked, but unfortunately, since I put all of my specs into archery, I really struggled with the melee damage and unfortunately got overwhelmed. So I went back and respect fully into strength again. And I eventually made my way back to the ladders, used the ladder strat, and with the new strength I had, I was able to defeat all of the enemies. Next was the snow area which was a massive breath of fresh air as these enemies could be juggled so it was a lot easier than the previous section. In fact we pretty much flew through this entire stage and before I knew it I was at the Ice King boss fight. Now I changed my pet for Yeti here as he actually makes it so you can't be frozen and during this fight all of his attacks rely on you getting frozen. It was another pretty slow boss fight as he teleported a lot leaving my DPS windows very small but the actual fight itself wasn't too difficult so yeah it definitely took a while especially slipping in all the ice but eventually I managed to defeat him and just like that our third princess was saved still no sign of the king's bath salts however oh wait wait no did I take him oh no Oof. Anyway, we're now onto the final stage of the game. For the first of the four bosses was the Painter boss fight. This is normally a very easy boss, but since I did very little damage, his paintings were a real problem. You see, you have to defeat his paintings in order for him to come down and draw more, allowing you to get a small window of DPS. Normally at this point in the game, you would have a lot more health, so you would just let the paintings explode on you, and then you would do damage on the boss. But since I did very little damage and had very little health, that wasn't really an option. This left me stuck as I had to defeat the paintings each time but it took a very long time to do so and was very easy to make mistakes and once again I tried many different strats. I tried using Snailbert to tank the damage. I tried using Rami to attack the paintings. He did nothing by the way so thank you Rami. I tried seeing if the sandwiches made a difference. The boomerang did nothing and pretty much nothing seemed to work. However, I think I just got a very lucky run as I was able to get the boss's health low enough to where he came down for the last part of the fight. But since I took so much damage from all the paintings earlier, I had very little health and no healing left. So for this part of the fight, I had to dodge all of the paintings as being touched by one would have ended it whilst trying to get damage in on the boss. It definitely took a while, but eventually I was able to defeat the first of the four bosses. And for the second fight, I didn't buy any healing potions as I was very confident as I knew that I could dodge the Cyclops' attacks very easily as well as get consistent easy damage. And I was right, it's a very easy fight, just dodge when you have to dodge and attack when you can get damage in. Definitely the easiest of the four fights. However, moving on to the third fight and... Oh god. The Necromancer fight. Now everyone knew at the start of this run that the Necromancer fight was the make or break. And even I knew this fight was not easy. In fact it took me over two hours to complete. The problem was before you even fight the Necromancer himself there are two phases of enemies you have to go through. He will spawn in every enemy that you fought in the game from start to now plus some giants for good measure. This meant you had to fight a good mixture of enemies that can be juggled enemies that can't be juggled, enemies that threw bombs. It was just a real mess. It got to a point where I was running out of money to buy healing potions for each run, so I had to go back and do some earlier bosses to get money for healing. In the actual fight, I was able to get past the first phase pretty easily, but once that second phase hit, oh boy. <laughs>
But eventually, after two hours, I finally got the run and I could finally fight the actual boss of this stage. Funnily enough, the boss fight is very easy. By using my new hidden ability, the block button, this fight felt more like Elden Ring than Castle Crashers and is probably one of the most intense fights in the entire game as it isn't just jumping and attacking, it actually is a bit tactical. You have to plan your attacks and plan your blocks, like I was in try hard mode. But eventually the necromancer finally died and we can finally move on to the last boss of this run. Now the final boss will have five different phases and the first phase is very trivial. There are four crystals and all you have to do is destroy them when they land. So once you get past that stage, you actually fight the boss himself. His first phase is easy, just a little slow. So he will get two different bubbles around him. First is his blue bubble, which means you can only damage him using magic. Yeah, level one magic isn't gonna cut it. But luckily he has a red bubble, which you can attack him with any other attack. So after a while of waiting between bubbles, I eventually defeated the second phase. And moving on to the third phase, it's a bit of a meme, you pretty much just stand and hit him, it's not very difficult at all. And for his fourth phase, he turns into a giant spider-like creature. But once again, it's pretty easy, Is all you gotta do is jump up and hit him, and then once he attacks, just move out of the way. The only real problem is the enemies on the floor that would like to get a cheeky hit on you every now and then, but it wasn't too difficult. His fifth phase is just a meme again, just stand and hit him. And then finally, you are on his sixth phase. For this part, you actually fight him one on one and he will use his sword which can summon meteors as well as do a swirly attack. But once again, it's just a waiting game as the fight itself isn't difficult, it just takes a little bit. You don't really want to be standing still during this fight at all as you can get caught by a meteor. So the strat is to just run in circles and then once he lands, do a dive attack to get some damage on him and repeat. And after a little bit, the boss finally fell. The whole floating structure that we're on falls, but luckily we land on the king's bath salts as well as save the last princess. We ride it all the way back to the castle and finally we can end this run. And one final check to make sure we didn't have any stats during any point of this run. And that is it. Can you beat castle crashes without leveling up? Yes, yes you can. But overall, this run took about 9 hours, so I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone. Now, I do have more Castle Crashers runs planned, including a level 1 insane mode run. But I'm happy with his victory for now. I would just like to give a massive thank you to all the members seen here on screen. You guys are amazing, so thank you. But anyway guys, that is the end of the video. If you did like it, then a like and subscribe would go a very long way. Once again, thank you so much for 1000 subscribers. I am so happy and I cannot believe we hit a number like that. But until then, I will see you in the next video and goodbye.